Hey guys, welcome to my video on profit maximization and perfect competition. I have a few goals today. We're going to discuss how a perfectly competitive term firm maximizes its profit, and we'll show how to measure it on this graph. So yeah, let's get started. On the left, I've got a market with lots of firms in it. It's got a supply curve, it's got a demand curve, lots of firms, they're all price takers. You know the story there. On the right, I've got one firm. And it's one of the many firms in this market. So I guess our Q scaling is a little different, but don't worry about it. One firm of these many firms. Now, there were some big assumptions that went into the perfectly competitive model. We assumed that there were lots of buyers, lots of sellers, so that everyone is a price taker. No one can change the price. We assumed free entry and exit in the, mar in the market. We assumed perfect information and we assumed identical products. So this firm is just one of many, and it can't control price. It can't control who's in the market with it. This is perfect competition. The market has a given price. No one has any control over it. Now to a single firm, I can actually take that price and superimpose it on the single firm's decision. When I do, this firm has to take price as given. When it takes price as given, that means that this is the price no matter what quantity they sell. Another way of saying that is that their demand curve is perfectly elastic. This price is their demand curve. Let's look at what decisions the firm might be able to make to maximize its profit. Uh, some things you might think about in the real world. Some firms will do price campaigns. They'll put things on sale to woo consumers. But that doesn't work here. They're price takers. They can't control price. Demand curve is perfectly elastic. Maybe they can do an ad campaign to inform consumers about where they are or what they sell. Well, that's not true here because they have perfect information. There's no way to make the people more informed than they already are. Well, maybe they can distinguish their product in some way. Maybe make it more a better quality or find some way to just make it different from everyone else. They can't do that in perfect competition. It's an identical product. Side note to real life, a firm can do those things. And if it does those things, it's, it's either going to fail or it's going to leave perfect competition and go to some imperfect competition, like monopolistic competition, for instance. Uh, that's fine. So I'm not saying that those things can't happen in real life. I'm just saying in perfect competition, those things don't exist because this is what perfect competition is. The only thing our firm can actually do, the only strategic decision it has, is it can choose its quantity. That's the only choice it really has. Everything is set in stone except for what quantity they produce. And this firm is going to want to sell every unit of the good that helps them make money. And they're going to try not to sell any units of the good that make them lose money. Because our goal is profit maximization and profit is total revenue minus total cost. All the money going in minus all the money going out. Now, if that's our goal and we're deciding what quantity of our good do we want in order to maximize profit, well, that's a how many question. How many should we sell? To answer a how many question, you make your decision at the margin. So what does that mean? That means that for each unit that I sell, I will consider. Do I make money on this unit? If I do, I should sell it and make another. And if I don't, I should stop. And so let's let's take our firm from left to right and let's take a look at what is profitable and what is not. Now I wanna start by cutting to an end result. I'm gonna say it right now. You choose your quantity by setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Now that word marginal is part of choosing at the margin and notice it also has revenue and cost has to do with the total revenue and the total cost. Marginal revenue is the additional revenue from one sale of your good. And marginal cost is the additional cost from one sale of your good. And our end result for the firm's decision is going to be that this is how they choose their queue. Well, Allow me to explain why real quick. The demand curve in perfect competition is the marginal revenue curve. Since the price never changes, 
the money coming in per unit sold is always the price. This relationship will not be true in monopolistic competition, oligopoly, or monopoly, but it's true now in perfect competition. All right, let's go from left to right, choosing at the margin. Over here, my price is up there, my marginal revenue is up there, my marginal cost is down here. I make money on that sale because the money coming in is more than the money going out. So I should sell it and make another. The marginal revenue is greater than the marginal cost. I'll make that sale and sell another. And so on. As long as my marginal revenue curve is greater than or equal to my marginal cost curve, I want to sell my good. And so I'm actually going to increase production all the way up until this intersection. At that point, marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That last sale doesn't actually make me any money. But what it's done is it has captured all of this producer surplus down here. Everything between the demand curve and the cost curve. Every profitable transaction has been transacted. And what we don't have is any bad transactions. See, if we increase production further, the marginal cost curve is above the marginal revenue curve. And we would lose money because the costs would outweigh the revenues. That is actually it for the firm's decision. So it's actually really simple. But for you and me who need to be able to analyze the market, we're going to go a little farther. Can I show what profit is on this graph. But that's gonna be for my next video, which is here showing in the end screen. This video is just about choosing the quantity, and on the next one, I will talk more about the overall measuring profit in the market. So I hope this was helpful to you. If not, you know, too bad, maybe the next one will be. Uh, good luck, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time, and good luck econing.